Money, trauma. My research has led me to believe that the issue of financial trauma runs much deeper into a wide variety of addictions, anxieties, depressions, and mental health issues than we dare to give it credit. And this video is going to be an unpacking not only of the money stories and the money narratives and your poverty mindset and how to go from poverty mindset to wealth mindset and blah 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 blah. We're going to look at the deep traumatic origin of money issues because the majority of family dysfunctions, if you really look at the full picture, do have a significant degree of money involvement. Usually the lack of money tends to be a major issue. If you look at statistics around divorce, one of the major contested points is money. If you look at issues around family dysfunction in regards to addiction and various traumatic abuses within the family home, it tends to be families which have less financial affluence. I'm not saying that wealthy families don't have their own issues and problems, but the vast majority of people who are struggling with anxiety, depression, and mental health challenges did not come from affluent homes, or if they did come from affluent homes, they came from affluent backgrounds where there were mixed stories around money being associated with worth, and that's a whole nother series of issues. That's like a wealthy trauma, like the trauma of being born wealthy. It's a genuine thing. I've worked with clients who've come from affluent backgrounds and clients who've come from literally war zone countries. There's a massive world of difference. One video on money trauma isn't going to solve the question of where does money come from? I'm not even going to look at the banking system. I'm not going to look at, we're going to look at the trauma. We're going to look at the actual trauma related to money. And I'm going to have to make a bit of a guess about the kind of person who's going to be watching this video. I'm going to imagine that you're not actually from a wealthy background. You're probably more like me and from more of maybe a lower class or a middle class background where money wasn't an infinite accessible resource. Your family stories had a lot to do with saving, maybe ideas around we can't afford that, not now, we need to save up for that, or that's not for people like us. All of these various programming conditioning narratives from mom or dad where it comes to poverty or at least not having as much money as you might imagine could be available as a child. Money trauma goes deep because it affects the way that you will relate to your finances as an adult. I often get questions like this one where people want me to go deeper into the idea of talking about money and how it relates to our personal mental health, but it does depend on the individual circumstance. So for the sake of this video, for just one YouTube video, I'm going to assume that you're like me and you're from a background where money was always an issue. These are the kinds of experiences where there was always rationing or limitation on how much you were allowed to have. You were very price aware from an early age. You'd go into a restaurant and look for the cheapest possible things on the menu. You'd go into the toy section and be really aware of the expensive toys, the expensive toys, and try and go for the cheap toys. There were all kinds of money narratives that you experienced. Maybe it wasn't that extreme, maybe you had more of a conventional child experience, and it wasn't the case that you were self-conditioning outside of not spending too much and wanting to be a good little boy or girl because you saw that if you wanted expensive things, you were given a slap on the wrist, and who do you think we are? We're not made of money. I, I get it, I get it. I, I likewise have those memories of coming back from the supermarket with my mom, and the first thing that would happen is that my dad would hold out his hand like this, and my mom would present the receipt for the groceries, and he would assess to see if five pence could have been saved on the baked beans, and it was not a good situation. I likewise had that conditioning, and I wasn't raised in an environment with good money stories. The way that it shows up in my life, the way that it really used to get in the way with a lot of my, I suppose, expansion, is in regards to actually investing in myself and not just being a frugal kind of hoard it all away character. The major money trauma response for me personally was hoarding money and not being willing to spend money to make money. I wouldn't invest in healthy organic food, I wouldn't invest in all the books I've now invested in, and I wouldn't invest in teachers and mentors and a variety of other helpful lifestyle things like even going to get the right kind of healthcare that I need or the right kind of whatever it might be 
because I was trying to save that money. I was trying to hoard it away somewhere safe. And of course, childhood trauma conditioning, what you're doing there is you're basically holding onto your pocket money. And if there wasn't enough money in the family environment, this is the inner child within the adult who is trying to keep their money separate from the money issues in the family. That's what it is. A different person might have a different money trauma story where they don't necessarily have the saving habit, they just have the spending habit, but it often can relate back to that same core issue that money is an issue itself and it's not something to be held and held really close, closely to your chest. It's something that's actually so painful to hold, you need to get rid of it. You need to throw it away, you need to spend it on something really quickly because psychologically you can't handle the pressure of actually having to deal with finances. This is another massive issue for anyone who struggles with debts or struggles with not being able to properly plan for the future, not being able to properly budget, not knowing where their money comes and where their money goes from a trauma-based perspective. This would be a disorganized or an anxious attachment to money itself. Of course, you can have anxiety as reflected in hoarding, or you can have anxiety as reflected in pushing away. There's both the pulling in and pushing away responses. It depends on your particular temperament, but those are the two major ones. If you know that you tend to hold on to money a little bit too long and you're missing the opportunities to spend it in ways that would then increase your wealth, or you're likewise unable to use money in a way which plans for the future, and never increase your wealth and different dysfunction, those two lanes tend to be the greatest indicators, but where can we take it from here? How can I turn this video into something which actually turns you from poverty mindset into wealth mindset? It's more than just spending money on things which are good for you. You really have to go deeper into trauma stories around who is worthy of wealth. This is something which I can really relate to because I grew up in an environment where I was not exposed to wealthy individuals. There were a lot of... Um, I suppose, government housing situations. That were, we call them council estates in the UK. I had friends who were in council estates. I personally lived in a nice cul-de-sac, but the culture was very much uh, football and drinking culture in the UK outside of Birmingham. It's a very kind of, not rough necessarily, but not refined. There's a difference if you don't know UK culture between the Midlands, which is where I was, and then the North, and then the South. And if you're in the Midlands and you're kind of in this football drinking, you know, everyone goes and celebrates how messed up they can get on the weekend kind of environment, and not many people are taking entrepreneurial ventures, and no one's really reading books. It's very difficult to have an internal narrative system that you are indeed meant for wealth, or you're meant to build a business. The typical standard conditioning is play it safe, get a job, complain about not getting enough money, and just continue that for about 50 years until you die. It's not a good story. Didn't work for me. I decided to unplug myself from that story, and I've progressively shifted my life towards, well, a point of being able to generate wealth, and I likewise have a very strong narrative that wealth is meant for me. And if that's triggering for you, if you don't believe that you should be wealthy because you've got ideas of wealth being associated with evil people in suits who are controlling the world in manipulative ways, sure, whatever, that's happening. But what if you considered wealth to be something which is beneficial for you, your family, and your community, and the people that you're here to help? You can have selfish motive and selfless motive wedded together. I want to have enough money to be able to have a wonderful patch of land, do what I want with that patch of land, and be able to have an incredibly healthy envir environment for myself and anyone who I might want to have in my in my space. It's not just for me. It's not, I'm going to go live in a castle on my own and have all kinds of luxury cars and luxury items. I'm not interested in that story. But I do recognize I live in the real world and to have a nice plot of land with a nice home and enough material resources to pay for builders and architects and other kinds of people who I'd want to support because... I pay for them and they get their job and everyone gets to help each other out. You need a lot of money. You need millions to make that happen in the UK. And if I think, okay, well, I'd like that, eventually further down the road, the only way to make that happen is to have a healthier wealth narrative. And your story doesn't have to be the story of, I want to have the luxury cars, I want to be flying around the world and having all of these fancy five-star experiences. I really couldn't care about that myself. If you want that more earthy, grounded perspective of being out in nature, realize that you still need 
wealth. I spent two years traveling around Europe, working on various states of off-grid farms and small holdings, and this is something that is just not spoken about. I saw 20 in total, but in terms of the small holdings and the communities, at least half a dozen to a dozen different moments where the owners, the founders, the community commune members were talking about things that were going wrong. And you could see where things were going wrong, and surprise, surprise, what would have solved the issue? More money. Always. Always more money. Yes, there's character issues. Yes, there's issues with whatever it might be. Primarily, though, the water thing needs changing. That costs money. The solar power thing needs changing. That costs, costs money. There needs to be a new trailer on the land to house this person who's coming over. There needs to be this thing for the building works. It's all around money. So if you don't solve the issue of where your money's coming from, if that money's meant for you and releasing the money trauma stories that you were given, your fantasy, your golden shadow projection of where you want to go in a more conscious lifestyle will not be able to materialize. You can go on that path of trying to figure out how to do it really cheaply and how to save money here and there. I have seen many people trying this firsthand and it doesn't lead to a good feeling. It doesn't lead to mental stability because you can be on the farm with your children and imagining myself now if I go down this path of I'm not going to worry about finances I'm just going to get enough to get by or maybe save a little bit maybe I've got like three months of savings but I'm not going to chase money because that would be beneath me my money trauma story there of money is not meant for me and I give this kind of twisted rhetoric of money is beneath me it's low consciousness it's low vibration absolute garbage because what will actually happen is you will be on the farm and you'll have your wonderful family there but you will not be present because you'll be stressed about money because the money needs to come in somehow otherwise you don't get to eat and there's no heating it doesn't you can't escape it you just can't escape it you really need to fix this i've given obviously my story of what i want to do with money but also if you want a different story which isn't about you selfishly and you're inspired by the idea of starting a company or starting a business and having employees and people who you can support which is very much what i want to do i want to be able to attract enough wealth and maintain wealth in a way that i benefit and everyone around me benefits. I'm not yet at the stage in my business where I'm hiring out different employees, but I'm very much looking forward to creating structures and systems where I get to support other people in their dream work because I focused on wealth. If I didn't focus on the money, if I tried to bypass it or be anxiously avoidant and hiding away from it or just hoarding a small amount that was just enough for me and not trying to be abundant, there's the abundant mindset, there's the clickbait turn. If I didn't have an abundant mindset, I wouldn't be able to make a beautiful, beautiful situation which could then reach the lives of, well, I suppose within the work that I'm doing, I'm doing online education to have the resources to be able to scale out online education. You can literally reach millions of people. That requires money. If you want to make a big impact or have a big contribution, money will not be something which you can avoid and it's such a beautiful thing to fall in love with. I've got an entire shelf in this bookcase right next to me. You can't see it on the camera, but there's an entire shelf. And it's all my business books in relationship to sales and marketing and finances and entrepreneurship and all the various aspects of doing a solo business like I'm doing. And I had to learn how to do that. You don't have to become obsessed with money, but you need to be financially literate in a way that you weren't given that literacy by default. I think for probably, if you're still watching this video at this point, your mom and dad didn't give you great stories about financial literacy, or maybe the advice was very survival oriented, just get a job, be happy for a job, and continue that through and complain about the taxes. Doesn't work. There are many ways to upgrade your mentality around wealth. Yes, you want to have tax minimization through legal means, but also at the inner work level, Whenever I get paid, for example, by a new client, I take out 40% immediately, put it into my tax bucket, and I don't have this narrative of, ah, oh, the tax man's taking my money. You can weave a story of, well, that tax is going to go to the UK, and some of it I disagree with, but also pay for some schools, pay for some council situations, and that's the benefit of living in this kind of safe country that I get to live in. One example of a story that, yes, you do have to pay tax. Of course, in the UK, you pay particularly high tax if you're earning over a certain bracket. But you can choose the story that you repeat for yourself 
Otherwise, you will be scared of making money because you're afraid of being taxed on the money that you make. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense in the same way that hoarding a thousand dollars so that you can hold on to that and really saving money everywhere, but then losing the hours in your life because you're going for five different supermarkets rather than just going to the one supermarket to save, let's say, a hundred dollars, not, not realizing that you just spent four hours of your day doing that and you could have spent that time making money. There's so many areas I could take this video. Money trauma isn't an easy topic to talk about, which is why I really do need your help in the comment section. Please leave a comment if you have a specific focus question of, I have money trauma around this issue. Can you expand on the idea of like either being a saver or a spender, what, whatever it might be. Just really get specific in the comments. I can make more videos like this. It's such an important topic, especially for people who are interested in trauma healing, because it's such shadow territory. It is unbelievably ignored within conscious circles. And we believe that money is something which is beneath us and it's just not the case. You will see what happens in ashrams and communes and meditation centers. If you go to these spaces and you see what happens when the money runs out, it is very difficult to remain high consciousness when people have, have just drop back into survival mode because they don't have the finances to support themselves, let alone other people. It's a really tricky space to be in. Any final words of advice or words of wisdom that I could give on this money trauma video? Fundamentally, your family story doesn't need to be your story. And if you want your story to be the best story, falling in love with wealth acquisition is the default thing that I recommend for everyone watching this video at this point. Don't become obsessed to the point of going down the distorted pathway towards luxury experiences, luxury experiences, which I believe are, uh, I'm not going to try and, I'm trying not to swear. I believe that they condense your consciousness. Let's talk about these experiences. I'm trying, I'm really trying not to swear. I'm really against this. Don't spend your years chasing superficial materialistic trappings, which are worthless. It could be many different things. It can be shopping, it can be consumption. Don't do that. Don't do that. But make your version of wealth healthy organic food, all of the supplements and healthcare that you need, the ability to travel to places that you want to go and experience, and the ability to be able to live in the kind of home that you'd want to raise your family in. Truly your dream home, whatever that means for you. I would invite more awareness towards country living or nature living or being somewhere where there's a healthy genuinely grounded element to your lifestyle. Maybe you want to go live in a penthouse in the city and you want to be spending $10,000 a month on rent or something or your mortgage and you want to be in the penthouse and that's what you want to do. Fantastic. Most people who watch my channel probably aren't interested in that. Do you recognize that if you're going to go out and live on the land, you also need to be earning a good amount of money to make that a good experience. Just don't accept the stories of what wealth is based on what you're seeing in culture and really challenge that juvenile narrative that's inside of you. The wealth is something which is default associated with superficiality and triviality because you can still get to go and experience the best of cities and the best of cultures with a bit of extra disposable income and have a real state of consciousness when you're going through those experiences with people you love in a way which isn't superficial. I'm not trying to wrap together any kind of city. Any city living is bad and all country living is good. It's not that simplistic, but hopefully you understand my point. Money trauma goes deep. Just pause to reflect on your own narratives. For me personally, I've spent years actively, progressively, step by step, healing my relationship with wealth, having the right balance between saving and spending, making sure that I've got my six month, 12 month buffer zone, but then not following my trauma pattern for me personally, which is okay. I've got one year worth of savings right now. Let's make it two years. Let's make it five years. Is that appropriate for now? Or should I use that money to be able to grow my business through buying more educational resources or maybe hiring a mentor or having a certain type of technology that could help me out with my daily workflow? Probably better to go for that option, not stacking digital numbers in the bank, but my trauma would say, stack those digital numbers, stack them in the bank, stack them, make that number higher and higher just in case anything might happen. Someone else, exact opposite pattern, they don't know how to save and they actually need to learn how to save. It's up to you. I hope this video has been useful. Once more, leave a specific comment in the comment section. It really helps me to make these videos as precise as possible. You see, I'm trying to bring many different examples. I could even do a whole video on the kind of trauma that I see from people who've grown up in wealthy backgrounds where 
wealth is associated with status and self-worth and I've worked with a few clients like this and that's a whole nother set of topics. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section. But in the meantime, there's the next video and I'll see you over there.